Let's talk about light. We have the dual nature of light. Light is a particle known as a photon. Light is also a wave called electromagnetic wave. How is light wave different from sound waves? Well, light waves are electromagnetic, but sound waves are mechanical. What does that mean? Electromagnetic waves, such as light, can be transmitted through vacuum. They do not need a medium to propagate through. That's how light travels through space. That's how sunlight can reach us here on Earth. Conversely, if Elon Musk is making some noise on Mars, you will not hear that noise here on Earth because sound, a mechanical wave, cannot be transmitted through vacuum. Sound waves require a medium to propagate through. And the medium could be solid, liquid, or gas. If I were you, I would write down these three equations because they will help us tremendously answer light problems. Please watch the videos in this playlist, Chemistry Quick Review, in order for maximum understanding and retention. Let's start by answering the question of the previous video. What are the stoichiometric coefficients in the aforementioned equation when it's balanced? Please pause and try to answer this yourself. Let's go. First, balance the equation. Let's look at silver. We have one silver atom here and two silver atoms there. How about iron? Two iron atoms here and one iron atom here. As for carbon, we have three carbons here and only one carbon here. We have nine oxygen atoms and three oxygen atoms. So let me start by adding a three here. Why did I do this? So that I can have nine oxygens on this side and nine oxygens on this side. Beautimus. Now, how many silver atoms do I have right now? Three times two is six, but here I only have one. So let's multiply this side by six. Amazing, six silver atoms, six silver atoms, the silver is balanced. Let's look at iodine. Here I have six iodines, but here I only have three. So let's multiply this by two. Now I have three multiplied by two equals six iodine atoms. Six iodine atoms on the right side and six iodine atoms on the left side. Iodine is balanced. Let's look at iron. Two iron atoms here and two iron atoms here. Also iron is balanced. Mr. Carbon, three carbons here and three carbons there. Beautiful. My equation is balanced. Let's capture the stoichiometric coefficients. Basically, they are these numbers. Number six, here we have a one, which is not written, two and three. So my coefficients are six, one, two, and three. So the correct answer is E, as in energy. Speaking of energy, here is a wave. Look at this. Here is one cycle. And then here is another cycle. So in this diagram, we have only two waves. First wave and stop, second wave and stop. Each wave has a peak and a trough. The distance from one peak to the next peak is lambda, which is the wavelength. By the way, the distance from here to here is the exact same distance as from this point to this point which is the length of the wave, i.e. wavelength, beautimus. And this wavelength is also the same as the distance between one trough and the next trough. So the wavelength is the distance between two consecutive peaks or the length between two consecutive troughs. All of this was on the horizontal axis. But let's look at amplitude. Amplitude is on the Y or vertical axis. Amplitude is the distance between here and the peak or here and the trough. So the amplitude is the vertical distance from the midline of a wave up until the top of the peak or till the bottom of the trough. This vertical axis is the magnitude or the amplitude, which is a measure of intensity. I can shine a ray of light that is less intense or more intense, and this is a measure of brightness of light. But on the horizontal axis, how many vibrations per second is called frequency? How frequently am I going up and down, up and down, up and down? So here is an example for you. What's the speed of this wave? This is question number 101, because the previous questions are in previous videos in this chemistry quick review playlist. Can you pause and calculate the speed of this wave? 
Let's do it. You already know that any speed is distance over time. That's true for any speed in the world. Maybe with the exceptions of the Joe Rogan kind of speed. Distance over time. So how much is the time? Well, I've been told that the time elapsed from this point all the way until this point is one second. So I put one second in the denominator. How about my distance? Well, I need the distance traversed in the entire second, which is the distance traversed by two waves. The length of one wave, i.e. the wavelength, is two. But I have two waves. Here is the first wave and the second wave. So I have four meters of distance in one second time. Then we do the math. The speed is four meters per second. You can bring that second upstairs by changing the sign of the power. So it's four ms power negative one. Is there another way to do it? Absolutely. Speed equals the wave frequency times wavelength. What's the wavelength? Well, it's the length of one wave, which is two meter. The distance from here to here or from here to here or from this point to this point. Two meters. Amazing. And what's the frequency? The frequency is defined as the number of cycles or the number of vibrations per second. Per second in one second. How many vibrations did I cause? Here's the first cycle and the second cycle. So two vibrations per second, which means the wave frequency is two hertz or two seconds power negative one because basically the second goes upstairs. So what's the measuring unit of frequency? It is the hertz. Pearl for the pros. Hertz is the exact same thing as second raised to the power of negative one. So now the speed equals mu times lambda. What's my wave frequency? Two seconds power negative one. And what's my wavelength? Two meters. Multiply them together, you get the same exact answer. 4 meters per second or 4 ms to the negative 1 power. So the moral of the story is speed equals distance over time and speed also equals wave frequency times wavelength. Here is another question. You have three waves. Which one has the highest frequency? Please pause. What's the definition of frequency? Number of vibrations per second. Number of cycles per second. And here I have the highest number of cycles. And of course, the question assumes that this is the same time. So let's say that we have 10 seconds here and 10 seconds here. And this point represents 10 seconds. So I have the same amount of time. The difference is how many vibrations per second. So of course, C has the most vibrations per second, which means C has the highest frequency. Let's write the equation. C equals mu times lambda. Anytime we have two entities multiplied by one another, they will be inversely related to one another, provided that the third entity remains constant. So if the speed of the wave is constant, it means that as the frequency goes up, wavelength goes down. As wavelength goes up, frequency goes down and vice versa. Which means A has the lowest frequency and the highest wavelength, the longest length of the wave. Conversely, C has the highest frequency, but the shortest wavelength, highest shortest because the relationship between mu and lambda is inverse. Let's look at the electromagnetic spectrum. Again, sound is not an electromagnetic wave. Sound is a mechanical wave. How about electromagnetic? We have light. The light that we can see is the visible light. The colors of the rainbow can be memorized by the acronym Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. As I go this way, the frequency increases, the wavelength decreases. The more you go to the right, it means high frequency. Whenever you hear the word high frequency, I want you to think of high energy. So gamma rays have higher energy than x-rays and x-rays have higher energy than ultraviolet and ultraviolet has higher energy than infrared and infrared has high energy i.e. higher frequency than microwaves than radio waves etc and since gamma rays have the highest frequency they have the highest energy and this energy can be huge enough to break down your dna strands oopsie when you damage my dna you know what i get 
I can get mutations which increase my risk of cancer. Why? Because these radiations are high frequency, which means high energy. And that's why it's not a good idea to get a CT scan or an X-ray every single day. This is not a picnic. And when you go to the dentist and they take an X-ray picture of your jaw, why do they put a guard or a shield around your neck or around your chest to decrease radiation exposure? Because lots of radiation going to your organs is not fun. We want to minimize your radiation exposure. Believe it or not, sunlight does not only have visible light. Sunlight emits visible light and ultraviolet and infrared and even X-ray and gamma ray. Look at the lovely light bulb in your room. It does not just emit visible light. It mostly emits visible light plus others. But it's the dose that makes the poison. The amount of X-ray emitted from a radiology lab is way higher than any X-ray emitted from any light bulb used in domestic use. So when I go this way, frequency increases and wavelength decreases. But when I go the opposite way, wavelength increases and frequency decreases, which means energy decreases. When you multiply the frequency by the wavelength, you get the speed. What's the speed of light in vacuum? It is 2.9979, whatever, 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 times 10 raised to the eighth power meters per second. This is very important. And here is another question for you. A laser beam has a wavelength of 600 nanometers. What's the frequency of this radiation in Hertz? Let's do it. Please pause and try to answer this yourself. Are you ready? We know that the speed of light equals mu times lambda, the frequency times the wavelength. But hey, Medicosis, why do I care about the speed of light? Uh, they're talking about laser, not light. Doofus, laser is an acronym. It literally stands for light amplification based on the stimulated emission of radiation. So it is light, which means the same equation applies to laser. I know the wavelength, it's 600 nanometers, and I want the frequency. Do you know the speed of light? Yeah, it's 2.99 times 10 raised to the eighth power meters per second. So therefore, I only have one unknown, which is mu, the frequency. The frequency equals, by dividing both sides by lambda, you get c over lambda. The speed of light, or c, equals 2.99 whatever. Let's make it 3 to make the math easy times 10 power 8 meters per second. I have the wavelength, but it's not in meters, it's in nanometers, which means I need to convert the 600 nanometers into meters. How do we do this? Easy. Dimensional analysis, baby. Here is a nanometer. Okay, and you multiply this by what? My conversion factor. I have to put nanometers at the bottom. And I know that one meter has a billion nanometers. So 10 to the ninth power. And the rest is math history. Think of this 600 as 6 times 10 to the second power divided by 10 to the ninth power. So the end result is 6 multiplied by 10 and then you subtract the exponents. 2 minus 9 equals negative 7 meters. I have the wavelength in meters. I have the speed of light in meters per second. Now I can get the frequency. Mu equals C, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th power meters per second over lambda, which is 6 times 10 to the negative 7 power meters. Meter will cancel with the meter. This S belongs downstairs, and then you do the math. 3 divided by 6 is half, so I write 0 0.5. Multiplied by 10 is my base, and then subtract the exponents. Be careful. 8 minus negative 7, which means 8 plus 7, which means 10 to the 15th power. And second is downstairs. You can put it upstairs as second to the negative 1 power. Here's the thing, is this a proper scientific notation? No, this value should be between 1 and 10, not 0.5 because this is less than 1. So I need to shift this decimal point forwards one step. And when you shift this forward one step, you have to decrease the exponent one step. So this will end up as 5 multiplied by 10 raised to the 14th power s to the negative 1 power, and as you know, s power negative 1 is the exact same thing as hertz, so we can write that the frequency of the wave is 5 times 10 to the 14th power hertz, and that's the correct answer. And here's the same answer in colors. 
And if you've watched video number 12 in this playlist, we talked about the E and the delta E, the difference in energy, which is energy final minus energy initial. Suppose that the electron was in the third shell and then went down to the second shell. Can you give me the delta E? Sure. E final, what's the final destination? Two. N equals two. So it's the energy of the second shell minus the initial. Who's my initial? The third shell. So it's the energy of the third shell. And since the third shell has a higher energy than the second shell, this delta E will be a negative value. So when you go from a more excited state down to a ground state, i.e. from high energy to low energy, the delta E is negative. But when you go upstairs from low energy to high energy, delta E is positive. This concept will be very important later in thermodynamics and in exergonic versus endergonic reactions. Later, I'll tell you that when delta G is negative, the reaction is spontaneous, i.e. easy. It is easy to go from high energy to low energy. Nature likes that because low energy state is just low maintenance, easy to maintain. But the opposite is hard. When you go downstairs from excited to ground state, you emit energy in the form of a photon, which is a particle of light. But when you go upstairs, energy has to be added, i.e. absorbed. That's why you get a positive sign. And here's the third equation. What is E? Energy of a single quantum. What the French toast is a quantum. It's the smallest quantity, quantum, of energy that can be emitted or absorbed. Because there is a lovely doofus, I mean great scientist, known as Max Planck, who said that energy is quantized, not continuous. For example, if I am a store owner, I can sell you one notebook, two notebooks, three notebooks, but I cannot sell you half a notebook. I can sell you one textbook, two textbooks, three textbooks, 500 textbooks, but not half a textbook. Energy is quantized, not continuous. Can you give me an example of something continuous? Certainly, height, height of human beings. Some of them are, let's say, 1.6 meters, but then let's be more specific and more accurate. Some of them are 6000001, another person is 0000023, 4, and then yada, 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 up to infinity. This is a continuous measurement, but energy is discrete. It is quantized. It's either one or two, not this nonsense. So the energy of a single quantum is the frequency of the radiation multiplied by Planck's constant. Can we rearrange the equation to put Planck constant alone on one side? Sure, Planck constant equals, by dividing both sides of the equation by mu, you get energy over mu, energy over the frequency. Energy is measured in joules. The frequency is measured in second to negative one power. I can bring this upstairs by changing the sign into positive, i.e. joules times seconds. And that's the measuring unit of the Planck's constant. How much is that constant? 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th power. And it's a constant. It does not change. Here is another question. If a photon has a wavelength of 5 times 10 to the second power nanometers, please calculate the energy of that photon in joules. Get a pen and paper, try to figure out the answer. You will find out that you will need one of these three equations, if not more than one, and you will find the correct answer in the next video. Remember, the speed of light is the frequency of light times the wavelength of light. Delta energy, or the difference in energy, is the energy, final minus energy initial. And the energy of a single quantum equals the frequency of radiation multiplied by Planck's constant. If you know these three equations, you will be able to answer gazillion problems in chemistry and physics. All of these handwritten slides that are presented to you in each video in this chemistry playlist are available in PDF format to download on my website, metacosisperfectionalis.com. There are more than 1500 free videos on this channel, plus 300 premium videos when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, smash like, hit the bell, support my channel on Patreon or PayPal or Venmo. Go to my website to download my notes, courses, cases, or if you'd like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine and chemistry make perfect sense.